All right. Gumri, Armenia. Kumairi. Leninkan. Alexanderpol. Gumuru. Several city names <clears throat> come through here. It's the very ancient city, my home for four months. This is the central square here. The fountains going, the people are loving it. They got this statue of this Christian king that fought off the Zoroastrian Persians we're gonna get to in a second. Hold on, gotta get a better grip here. There we go. All right, people like when I just go off the hip, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> All right, I got a few notes here, but I'm gonna stick with you as best as I can. Got to film this now. As you can see, Armenian flanked by two massive churches here. And this is the main square. We're going to go walk in through the real Gumri on this side, though. Down here, no, it's real Gumri, but it's more visitor oriented. Pretty cool. All right, I like this statue right here. We're going to get into a little bit later what exactly is going on here. Christian warriors. This guy. Carrying a Bible and a sword at the same time. <laughs> oh, 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 look out. All right, I'm going this way. So it's Armenia's second largest city after the capital of Yerevan, but man, sorry about the shaky camera. My equipment's broken. I have notes like this. I'm not a professional here. <laughs> I almost should sit down for a second. Okay. Uh, it's the second largest city after Yerevan and, uh, you know, big part of all of Armenia history. The modern capital of Yerevan is also ancient, but, uh, you know, it's a modern metropolitan city, a metropolis, you know, with hint hints like you're feeling in any global city, really, really. Gumri, though, you can feel that you are in Armenia, for sure. Um, this was, was and is the cultural center of Armenian uh, culture. Sorry about the shaky camera. Once again, my stabilizer is broken. I'm not a professional here. All this stuff is janky. I'm poor. <laughs> I'm not a real YouTuber. But I'm filming anyways, man. Here we go. All right, here we go. So this is the real Armenia. This was once a, a center, a cr true crossroads of East and West. And uh, you know, just like all crossroad places, a big target of all its neighbors that either controlled, altered its fate, tried to alter its fate. Mother nature got in the way a couple times. There's a horse, Badaftez. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about that, but, you know, the Gumri, Kumairi, 4,000 years or so, lives on. We're going to walk to this side of town, the real Gumri over here, man. Uh, down here, I really like it over here, so that's where we're going. Four months of my life, give or take, was spent in these lands, kind of unexpectedly, but also expectedly. Butterfiz! <laughs> This kid almost hit me. I don't know if it was on purpose or accident. Some crazy shit went down here uh, a while back. Sorry. Um, we don't need to get into that though. Baravtez. What's up, buddy? All right. So, overall, all of Armenian history. Historia. Gumri, historia. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go over here where there's not as many people. No people to get in the film, no kids. Face this way, selfie camera, privacy. <laughs> What's up, guys? Baravtez. Okay. Look at this massive church. This church is completely rebuilt after the earthquake. We're going to talk about that in a second. But uh, overall, Armenian history goes back, you know, around 3,000 to 4,000 years. And uh, all of Armenian history is really in every era of human culture, the Achaemenid Persians, uh, all the Hellenistic and Greeks, actually even before that, Sumerians and Mesopotamians and Hittites and all these people, they talked about Armenians. Uh, 
of course, Alexander the Great. Armies kind of passed through here. They knew about the Armenians. Then you had the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire. Of course, they knew the Byzantines. Everyone that came through, the Arabs, Mongols, Turks, everything. Armenia lived on through all that. 4,000 years of uh, intact culture. You know, uh, I really like that. Yeah, these things are cool. These are like these cool designed crosses. That's a huge part of Armenian culture is the first nation to ever make Christianity the state religion, 301 AD. All right, but we're way before that right now. In the 900s BC, a city called Kumairi was mentioned. Um, Blah, 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 blah. Hold on. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, let's try that again. Um, in the 900s BC, a city, Kumairi, very similar to the modern name Gumri, is mentioned. Whoops. Kumairi was mentioned in uh, some ancient texts of the Uraratu or Kingdom of Van, centered, centered around Lake Van in the Armenian highlands. Hellenistic culture reached out here as Greeks colonized just north of here and along the Black Sea. Xenophon of Athens passed through the city Kumairi, working as a mercenary for the Achaemenid Persians. Ooh, dope. All right, so we're talking 3,000 years ago stuff was happening here. Not 100 years ago, not 50 years ago, not, not even 200 years ago. 3,000 fucking years ago, man. Right on this land right here. All right. So, blah, 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 blah. Edit this out, edit this out. No, get no kids in it. <sighs> it's hard to do like this. <laughs> All right, of course, the Persian culture also reached out here. The 550s BC, the Van Kingdom was weakened and the area and city was absorbed into the Achaemenid Persian Empire of Xerxes the Great and people of those fames. Oh man, so this church was rebuilt after the earthquake. Just a little side step here. 1988, the Siptak earthquake was really damaging. This church crumbled and here's, uh, I don't know, 20,000 people or so died. Here's a memorial to that man really sad rest in peace natural disasters are terrible oh okay back to history though so the Persians had a city built in this general vicinity um, it was a great example of a Persian city plan and it really flourished from the years about 500 to 200 BC but you know in the years around 500 BC Kumairi was included in the Ornotid Strarapi of Armenia. That was a breakaway Persian ruled empire from the Achaemenids. Ooh, cool. Wow, look at this Soviet weird fountain. Long forgotten. Yeah, this is a good place to film over here, actually. Woo, it's hot right now. That church is dope. Sorry. Shaky camera, shaky camera. I'm always with the shaky camera. All right. So we're talking still five, six hundred years before. <laughs> Five, six hundred years before uh, there's the Alexander Pool Hotel, yes. We're still in the BCs. Uh, Kumairi. Kumairi, I'm talking about. Uh, 3,000 years from Alexander Pool beginning. Kumairi. Kumairi. Starts with a K. Just Kumairi. No, no, ancient. Historia. Da, uh, Uraratu. Alexandra Pol. Kumairi. Uh, uh, Uraratu. Uh, Uraratu. Van. Ura Van. Yeah, Van. way back. Two. Way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Guys trying to help me. That's funny. That always happens. Okay. So I guess, you know, he was telling me that ancient city was down there a little ways. There's some ruins over there. I couldn't find it. I found some pictures of it. It, it was just a bunch of rubble. I've seen a bunch of ruins in my days, so. 
you know, I didn't go search it out, but that was a thriving city from the 500s uh, BC. The Greeks, it's also theorized, may have started a colony city around 400 BC in this general vicinity too. You know, not a lot is known. There isn't a lot of ancient ruin. You know, it's not like you're walking around Rome and you bump into something that's like, you know, 3,000 years old or 2,000 years old. So that's all right. It's on the same lands. Okay, moment. <laughs> Now or never, I gotta do this, okay. So really there was three theorized cities that all kind of existed in the area. The ancient Armenian Kumairi. Then you had the Persian city of no, no name, but it was in the region. And then maybe the Greek colony. So it was really three cities. Um, the original Uratu Kumaira is mentioned in ancient texts, the Persian city and the Greek colony could have all progressed into some sense of what we have today. <laughs> Probably all three. But despite these outside influences, just like all of Armenia, it's a good guy to tell this story with, just like all of Armenia, the Armenian soul persisted in the region, which came to fruition in the Armenian kingdom that sprang up in 331 BC. The city was included in the Shirak Canton, a name that is still used to this day. 331 BC, we're talking 2,300 to 400 years ago, long before any of this stuff was here. <laughs> okay, so the Shirak Canton is where we first get that Shirak name that's still this called this in this region to this day which is really cool reading the notes sucks i know it's unprofessional but i can't memorize shit and i don't have a lot of money for equipment and i'm not a real youtuber but that's the fun in it all right oh man one of my good friends lived here armenian canadian guy the church is beautiful this square is interesting all right so the shirak Canton. Over time, as world events swirled around the Shirak Canton of the ancient Armenian kingdom, I won't get into all that occurred, but you know, Alexander the Great, like I said before, around this time, 300s BC, mashed his way through the area just south of here. And then the Roman Republic, a couple centuries later, started influencing this region. So from around 190 BC to the turn of the millennium, the kingdom transferred to the Arataxia dynasty. Whoa. That's a hard one to say. The Arataxia dynasty, Armenian kingdom, around 200 BC. Ooh, they're playing some music, the sun's out. You know, I always tell people, this sun right now in June feels exactly like Los Angeles. Almost identical. <laughs> it's really strange, actually. Um, no humidity, it's nice, it's, it's, it's exactly the same, but oh, don't catch yourself in March here. You're gonna be freezing, negatives. <laughs> so it's not like Los Angeles in March. Okay, so they started making alliances, uh, you know, with the approaching Roman Republic, and then, the, you know, you had the Eastern Persians that were always powerful in their different forms. Um, and the, you know, then there was something called the Armenian Arsacid, Arsacid Kingdom that existed between the two, between Rome and the Persians. Sometimes a vassal of each, sometimes an enemy, um, sometimes aligning with one, sometimes aligning with the other, but yeah, it's confusing. But the city remained in Armenian self-governing control, even throughout all this from 19... AD to 428 AD. All right, so that's into the times of the Roman Empire. So what happened in Armenia right before that was the Roman general Pompey, Pompey the Great, he's also known, after his uh, pre six, uh, not successor, his previous general came into the region and fought a bunch of wars with different factions here, especially the Persians. Um, 
the previous general was released from service and Pompey was sent in who really you know went at it with Armenia not really here actually it's in more the area of western Armenia which is you know controversially part of Turkey now but that's a whole another story <laughs> uh, well yes they had a very famous King Tigran the Great that fought off well the Persians from the east and the Romans in the west and all other influences and Tigran really battled Pompey's uh, well the general before really strong you know the Roman legions they were they were forced to be reckoned with but uh, as soon as the Senate in Rome ooh, man, sorry for the filming <laughs> as soon as the Senate in Rome got Pompey Pompey to come in here Pompey the Great the once friend of Julius Caesar but then turned enemy in the world famous Civil War he came through not really this city but to the west anyways they took over and uh, Tigran the Great signed a peace deal with the Romans and so that's the time we're getting into now okay early on Christianity gets into the consciousness of the Armenians Badeftez hello what's up normal normal problem no yeah, okay. Okay. What's up, guys? Are you hello, from hello. Gumri? Chill out. Chill out. <laughs> yeah, say hello. hello. <laughs> My name is Sasha. Your name is Sasha. Are you from Gumri? Okay, bye, bye, bye. Hajo <laughs> Gatun. <laughs> All right. Christianity, like I said, was made the state religion 301 AD. Uh, not a lot is known about the pagan Armenia. There's all kinds of interesting stories like this 200s AD nun that, well, she was, uh, no, three, late 200s, 300 AD nun. Her name is really hard to say, but the emperor Diocletian of Rome heard of her beauty and wanted to marry her, but she was Christian and a nun, so she ran from him. She ran to Armenia, and then the Ar pagan Armenian king wanted the same thing, she refused because she was a nun and the guy like the king took her and all her friends and like ripped their tongues out and killed them ripped their throats out and she's a saint to this day your names my name youtube uh okay okay why are you gay <laughs> wait wait <laughs> All right, so, you know, the Armenian epilastic belief is that the apostles came through here. I don't exactly which, you know which ones, but that's what they call their specific brand of monotheist Christianity, the Armenian apolostic church. But really, in the, the Arctiastid uh, dynasty is when Christianity got a hold. Wow, that's a cool little thing we got some interesting music going on some kids <laughs> um, not a lot is known about pagan Armenia but in 301 AD Christianity was made the state religion the first nation to do so and what it is to this day um, but that's a story for another day that I'm gonna make at one of the oldest cathedrals all right so the Zor Zoroastrian Persians in the 400s entered the area trying to convert the entire people. I'm not going to walk down there again, but that's what that statue is, which the Armenians, you know, kind of lost, but um, they didn't convert. That was the main thing. They were Zoroastrian. Um, the, so the Romans and the par Persians partitioned Armenia, but in 428 AD, the assassinated Persians defeated the Armenians what? <laughs> All right, these kids are following me. Hello. Okay. So we're in the 400 AD. All right, this is the old Alexander Pool. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, this water and gloomery, this is an ancient symbol. No, God, please, no, no! All right, sorry if that was all over the place. You know, I was in the 
Central City. The kids are bugging me. <laughs> Maybe this will be a little easier now. Okay. So next into the 600s AD, a new power smashes onto the scene that emerged from just south of here. Actually, we're not too far from the Middle East in Iraq and Syria and Saudi Arabia. Just like it did everywhere, Islam comes onto the scene in the 630s, 640s, 650s AD. The Byzantines and Persians had been battling with each other nonstop through the area since the 500s AD, pretty much nonstop. And, you know, many Ar Armenians were actually in the Byzantine army. What's up, Eastern Romans? Byzantines, they had an Armenian le uh, legion, I guess, Armenian, I forget what they call it, Armenian theme? Ah, I don't know. You know, uh, many Armenians were in the Battle of Dar Dara that was slightly to the west of here. That was a world-changing moment in five, uh, 530. So more war than the uh, world-changing moment, 630, 530? Oh, I'm gonna have to research that. The Battle of Dara, when was it? More war than the Justinian plague ravaged the land, even here. Um, and then Islam came north from Arabia, capturing the city of Kumairi in 658 AD and conquering it and the entire Persian Empire which the city was nominally a part of after switching hands back and forth between Roman vassalage and Persian mostly some independence but but you know there's no evidence in the city anywhere nothing of any Arabic writings or ruins or pieces of anything, which is really strange and interesting, but um, You know there was a, there's very few right there. There was probably all kinds of scholarship going on and mosques most likely were built But you know those things are long gone Maybe some of these stones in these old houses could be from some of those old pieces of architecture who knows probably not though so 658 AD the city was in the massive Umayyad Caliphate that stretched from India pretty much all the way to Spain look at this door A long ruin you're forgotten about all right, I need to switch hands here all right so we're in the 600s, the city moves on, changes hands again. And uh, for nearly 200 years, the city was part of the, something called the Emirate of Armenia under the Umayyad Caliphate. Ooh. And then, you know, that switched to Abbasid, but we're gonna talk about that. Uh, the, the, the city was highly developed. It's an urban center between uh, 733 and 755 AD, Kumairi was the home base of many of a lot of trade. Um, but there was in those 730s, 740s, and 750s a uh, Christian-led Armenian rebellion called the Ardvazad Mamukinian, documented by the Armenian historian Gevon the historian. Woo! So they tried to break free of the rule. You know, it's weird that I'm just walking this way because I've never really walked down the street. Bad Eftez. <laughs> I don't usually like filming like this, but I'm just going for it because I'm leaving soon. And it's just been kind of a crazy existence here, man. Lots of friends, lots of Russians are here. Uh, lots of Russian vodka, Armenian drinks. <sighs> It's been an interesting time. It's an interesting place, but all right, let's talk about how it got to this way. So as the caliphate had its internal struggles, you know, managing control here and all the way to the borders of India and Spain became quite difficult up north here, even, you know, into parts of Georgia, the Emirate of Armenia, whoever was ruling that. Um, in 750, a revolution shifted the power from the Umayyad to the Abbasid Caliphate. And the capital shifted from Damascus to Baghdad. 
In the 800s AD, Armenia started getting lots of power again, which is interesting. This is a nice building right here. I've never seen this. So to placate some of the Christians, most likely of Armenia, the Caliph and the local governments made some alliances with some local Armenian, still Christian families, giving them some power to self-govern themselves from the, their home base in Ani, which actually isn't that far from here. It's an uh, Armenian-built ancient city. It's now in Turkey. Again, controversial, but... So uh, by 885, though, they convinced the cal Caliph that they should be independent from the Caliphate. Um, and, you know, they were dealing with their own issues with the Byzantines and everything. Wow, look at that eagle. Looks like the Byzantine eagle. That's dope. Whoa. <laughs> cool. Um, it's not the Byzantine eagle. That's a straight Armenian thing. I've never seen this building. It's an apartments complex. Very interesting. Oh, it's nice and quiet over here, finally. All this edits out, who knows? It's gonna be crazy. Great water. I'm sure they had great water in ancient times too. All right, so, um, you know, the, the Abbasids had their own issues like with the people in Spain breaking away, the claiming their own Cordoba Caliphate in, in North Africa. And, Wars in northern India, and all kinds of crazy places. Is that a real dog? I don't know. This building's tripping me out. <laughs> ah, this is a nice, quiet area, actually. I like it over here. Those kids, man, damn. They made telling that story a little bit difficult right there. Should have went somewhere else, probably, but that's all right. All right, so the Late 800s AD, the Bagratid Kingdom of Armenia was established. And in 961, the capital of Ani, a few kilometers away from here, was built up to major grandeur. All right, that was whoop, and I, oh. beautiful Marmashen Monastery that I went to a few months before going filming this, actually, in April. But uh, Marmashen Monastery was built by the Bagratid Kingdom of Ani. And uh, it still stands to this day. Got a little damage, we're gonna talk about how, why, but that'll be in a second. Oh, look out for the drivers here. They get kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, let's keep walking. So, you know, Kumairi was under the uh, governorship of some people called the Palvuini family. Um, you know, including this entire region. Sorry about the filming again. God damn it. I hate doing this shit. I'm not good at it. <laughs> it's not that I hate doing it. I just don't have the equipment. I don't know how people do this so easily. I got this cord. Is that going to make the final cut? Might as well. It's so weird I'm walking down this street right now. Because I've never been down here. But I'm trying to get to this park and tell the story at the same time. All right, anyways, um, fortresses were built around still Kumairi, independent now though in the kingdom of Ani, the Bagratit Armenian kingdom. Oh, 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 football, yes. Go uh, Real Madrid in Champions League. <laughs> I don't know, okay. What are we gonna talk about next? I'm just filming here. We'll see what makes a cut, what doesn't. These are really cool streets. This is like the real old area of Gumri. But I think 18, 17 or 1800s. Still not really that old, but pretty old. So we talked about Marmashen. We talked about Marmashen, but more world events would come smashing through this area. Uh, Basil the Great, the great Christian warrior emperor of the Byzantine Empire, 
came through here next after he personally led the siege in crushing the Bulgarian Empire in a city I've been to actually. Check out my video on that if I ever put it out. Um, take, retaking most of the Balkans, took the Bulgarian capital of Lake Orchid, and then he made his way all the way over here. If you think about that, how much traveling, how hard traveling was. It's really kind of crazy actually. Uh, wow, look at this building, totally gutted. But, oh God, you can't see it. Totally gutted by earthquake damage, never fixed. Damn, that earthquake was bad. Jeez, I'm California and I know earthquakes too, but not that bad. Wow, that's just crazy looking. It's like a ruin. What, someone's home or school? Who knows? All right, so Basil II had his eyes on this area. You know, the Byzantines, they kind of had on and off had problems with the Armenians. Uh, they're friends with them because they're both Christian against their non-Christian enemies, but the Armenians are something called, well, anciently called, something called the Monophysites, which their church believes Christ has one godly state. And I guess the Nicene Creed Christianity, which orthodoxy and Catholicism is, God has two states, a man and a god. Which doesn't seem like that big a deal, but it was a big deal. People got killed for these kinds of things. So, you know, the Armenians stayed true to their teaching and their ancient beliefs. Ooh, it's hot out here. <laughs> oh man, people are really gonna bug me in that park. All right, so the kingdom of Ani were kind of pushing against the Byzantines, not uh, you know, complying with them, you know, supplying them vassalage or soldiers or something, who knows. And, uh, wow, this place is crazy in here, man. Armenia is just so, Gumri especially, just so interesting, the way everything's set up. All right, more kids to bug with me. Please, kids, I'm peaceful. <laughs> All right, ooh, look at that building, cool. All right, so Basil II though smashed into the kingdom of Ani and took him over and laid siege. Um, Ani wasn't playing nice and enough was enough. Came through, swept through, conquered Ani in 1045 and Basil II conquered the city of Kumairi as well. So uh, hey, look at that. The first documented case of the city being a Roman city. Damn, can I get to the park through here? Oh, I'm going to have to figure this out. I don't think so. Maybe. It's up there. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, that was short-lived, though. Because next came another Look at this old rusted out truck, Soviet truck or something crazy. Ah, shit. All right, I'm gonna figure out where to go here. All right, maybe this is a good time to tell the story because uh, people in Armenia don't really like the T word, which I've come to <laughs> learn is what you should say when you're dealing with Turkic peoples. Um, but yeah, so it was Byzantine for just a short time. Some nomadic Turks, peoples who emerged from the area kind of northwestern of modern day China around 3,000 years ago. You know, the Turkic Mongolic tribes, uh, far, far from here. They've been traversing east through Central Asia through for millennia, altering history and bringing their th herds and horses further and further west. Some converted from Tengrinism. Shamanism to Islam, like the Seljuk Turks, um, which next came in through here, just a couple decades later, 1064, ravaging the city and area. Um, 
the energy in a lot of stuff, which was messed up, including that monastery. But that's not the first or the last time this city, <laughs> this region, and Armenian people in a whole had some outside force coming in trying to mess with them. And they just kept preserving on, man, somehow. Wow, look at that wallpaper up there. Ooh, I have to take a picture of that. All right, so the nomad style Turks, look at that crazy building back there, the green wallpaper. You know, they had to keep moving on with their horses and herds, so came in, took what they did, I guess, and uh, this is a really old street. Wow, this is amazing right here. Um, Armenians nominally regain control of the area um, and city, but through the 1000s and 1100s, it was kind of uh, associated with the Kingdom of Georgia, which was a, the golden Georgia. Georgian golden era, which was a large area of control and power, which was uh, interesting. So Armenia kind of benefited from being associated with that, but Armenia is not normally controlled their territory. It was just, you know, in the kingdom, I guess. Never tell an Armenian that or a Georgian that. I, I don't know. Do they like each other? I think so. Ah, man. All right. Anyways. Um, you know, until, like I said, until about 1201, this was the golden age of Georgia. The city was rebuilt and, uh, it was part of the Zakarid, Zakarid Principality of Armenia, a protectorate of Tbilisi. Ooh, an area of growth. God, sorry about the filming. An area of growth and stability as a crossroads of trade between the east and west, but their days were numbered again as well, both the Georgians and Armenians. This guy's all around town. I don't I always see this guy. I don't know what it means. It's like someone's watching you. I'm a little paranoid in this city, actually. I don't care. I've been through crazier things. I've liked it here. Overall, 90, 95% of my experience has been good here, which, man, sorry for the shaky camera. My damn equipment broke. <laughs> I don't want to get it fixed. I don't make money off these videos. 95, 90, 95 to 99% of my experiences here have been good. It just, I don't, it's a weird time for Americans to be here during the Russian, you know, Ukraine conflict war. And, uh, you know, Armenia. And, oh, wow, that was like a workshop in there. I didn't want to show it, but that was really cool. I don't know what they're doing. Making wood, some uh, designs or something, carpentry. <sighs> And I just think it's not that hit by globalization here. So people kind of stare at you. It's really interesting. All right. Well, you might have heard of him. Genghis Khan and his associates. The Mongols emerging from the area of Lake Baikal, just north of northern China. Made their way all over here, all the way over here next. They ravaged the world, led by the great Khan. Uh, Genghis Khan's general, man, his, his name's coming off the top of my head. I might have been Genghis Khan himself, but he was chasing someone that defied him from something called the Khwarezmian Empire. Um, the emperor defiled the Mongols and the Mongols smashed and destroyed and enslaved their entire empire in the area of like modern Kazakhstan. So. The emperor fled, the Khorazmian emperor fled west into this region, so the Mongols chased them. <laughs> and pretty much the Mongols, everyone who they ran into either submitted or didn't. You know, some Armenian towns were just like, all right, you know, well, we're cool with you, you're better than the Turks or whatever. So others didn't though. Other Georgians and Armenians teamed up and tried to fight the Mon Mongols, but it was overall a disaster. Many Armenians died. The city had many deaths, 1200s AD. This area became something called the Mongol Protectorate of Armenia and vassals as vassals as part of the Ilkhanate. 
when uh, the massive Mongol Empire was divided into four pieces. It was part of that, the Il Khanid, which is kind of cool. All right, I like this area over here. All right, I'm gonna tell this story by this old door over here. <laughs> All right, so the Armenian Zakharid princes gained some autonomy in the Mongol Il Khanid, but lost it again in 1362. Guess what it was again? More Turkic tribes coming in. So waves of Turkic and Mongol nomadic step archer, horse riding, bow arching, crazy people just came in, messed with them for decades. <laughs> wow, this was built in 1895. That's pretty cool. It says up there. Still centuries before we're talking about. All right. Um, the city in this area must have had of many crazy generations. Um, a few... Right, let me sit down and tell it. So a few... This is a sad moment in the city's history. A few um, different Sunni Islamic Turkic tribes ran the region kind of until about the year 1400 when the madman Timur the Lane invaded the region in a similar fashion to the Mongols uh, a couple centuries before, not even two centuries before, but way worse. Uh, they sacked rough man he sacked all of Armenia and Georgia killing hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> wow it took 60 it's not wow it's awful it took 60,000 slaves um, the city and the region of Chirac were pretty much depopulated so that means nobody here today pretty much none of these families you trace the roots back to even the 1400s. Maybe some people, but most likely not. That's really fucking crazy. Hundreds of thousands. Why? Oh man, humans, humans are just insane. The Chirac region, that's really what I read. The Chirac region was depopulated. And then uh, soon repopulated again with other Armenians, I guess, from other areas when Turkic rule came into play again. And the city was renamed. Even though there was heavy taxes and levied on the local Christian populations, they were at relative peace, finally. And, uh, you know, this is not Turkish. These are Turkic rulers. They renamed the city throughout the 1400s Gumuru. You know, some of this might have been built during then. Maybe, I don't think so, but possibly 1800s. All right, we're gonna tell the rest of the story somewhere completely different. The winds are going on me, the ancient people, the Timur the Lane and the Mongols. Who knows what else? Sorry about that. Might have to do some voiceovers for the um, first part of that video. That was a little hectic in the square. <laughs> Just kids. Oh man. All right, next part.